happening. So right now, it is tracking for Tom Brady to become a limited owner of the Las Vegas Raiders. The Las Vegas Raiders have changed drastically over the past few years, and it makes you nostalgic for the old Raiders as it turns into Patriots 2.0, and the last nail in the coffin has finally been hit today. And Raiders owner Mark Davis is trying to win the fans over by taking shots at the Chargers. And Brady, who may own the entire Raiders organization one day, well, he might be bringing along a woman who I think the whole world is familiar with. The AFC West just might have Ciara and Kim Kardashian in the same division. I miss the old Kanye, straight from the gold Kanye. Great, go go marry Tom Brady, whatever you want to do, but get married and use your platform. It was just a week to 10 days ago when we reported on the fact that Tom Brady was looking to buy a portion of the Las Vegas Raiders. I'm going to break down exactly what's going on and then I'm going to give my opinion as a fan and explain what I feel about this because it does leave an odd sour taste in my mouth and it has nothing to do with the tuck rule. I do not blame Tom Brady for the tuck rule. I blame the commissioner, the NFL, and the refs for the tuck rule. But I do think Tom Brady is a guy who's pretty cozy with the league and always gets the benefit of the doubt. Meanwhile, the Raiders over the past 20 years especially and even prior to then tend to be heavily penalized and screwed over by the NFL time and time again. Although lately it seems like the Raiders have been screwing themselves. But what's happening here is Tom Brady is buying a minority portion of the Raiders. He's not going to completely own the entire Raiders. Apparently he's not going to be involved in any football operations nor will he make any football decisions. But we all know Mark Davis. He's not like Al. He's never been the type of guy to get involved in the X's and O's. So it would not be surprising if he goes to Tom Brady for some tips. But this deal is not entirely done. The owners still need to vote on it and we should expect this to happen by the end of the year. And in my opinion, I think they're all gonna say yes. And what this is really about and the big question that looms over all of this is does Mark Davis plan to continue owning the Raiders? Does he eventually wanna sell out and back out, especially when he has to pay an estate tax that will happen once his mother unfortunately passes away? Mark Davis is gonna be on the hook for this long large bill from the government that could be 35% of the value of the Raiders franchise. And the question is, is he trying to sell portions of the Raiders to prepare to pay this huge tax? And is he bringing people like Tom Brady on to try to increase the value of the Raiders, maybe sell some more shares? We know Magic Johnson and a couple of investors hit up Mark Davis to try to invest in the Raiders, but nothing ever materialized. Maybe they're on board now because Tom Brady owns a portion. In my opinion, and this is just me guessing as a fan, I don't really think think Mark Davis wants to own the Raiders. It does not seem like he was ever involved by his father in football operations, and it always struck me as odd that Al Davis held on to the team all the way up until 2011 in October when he passed away. It seemed like he never passed the torch over to Mark Davis before he knew his time was up, and maybe it's because he never trusted the guy entirely with the franchise. Who knows? But Mark Davis, time and time again, from Reggie McKenzie to John Gruden to now Dave Ziegler and Josh McDaniels, it seems like he's always wanted the Raiders to run on autopilot while he does other things, lives his life, invests in the WNBA and the Las Vegas Aces with, oh, oh my God, Tom Brady, who is also part of his team investing with the Las Vegas Aces. And so to me, and this is just my opinion, this just seems like another step of Mark Davis giving the keys to the Raiders franchise to somebody else. And because the amount of money once the estate tax hits is so high, I think Mark Davis might not even be able to afford it. And it might not even be smart of him to try to continue to own the Raiders when that time comes. And the reason why I say I miss the old Raiders, I just think this is sort of a bummer. I was always excited about the Raiders maybe turning things around and doing it on their own accord. And even though John Gruden was a flawed coach who made tons of mistakes, especially with drafting, I did think there was a small opportunity in the 2021 season for the Raiders to finally compete in the division, get some playoff victories, and be a serious team in the NFL by doing it their own way without having to cave and co op this strategy and philosophy of an entire other franchise, mainly the New England Patriots. But I do not blame Mark Davis for the situation that we find ourselves in today. He was never a football guy. Al Davis had his own philosophy, and even though in his old years it was going downhill, it seemed like he never really passed that on to Mark, and so what Mark Davis did is try to find others to run the organization for him. And Mark Davis is doing what any rational investor, any rational businessman would do, which is give the keys of the franchise to some other group of people who've been 
successful elsewhere, and that's why the Raiders are Patriots 2.0. And Tom Brady appears to be the completion of that. Tom Brady, as a minority owner, will always have a say in the Raiders, even if it's not technically written that he's involved in football operations. And because he's cozy with Josh McDaniels, because he's cozy with Dave Ziegler, and all these people who've been brought in to completely remake the Raiders, shake up the roster, shake up the coaching staff, and even shake up some of the people behind the scenes like the vice president, Dan Ventrell, no longer part of the team, even though he was there for quite some time. And look, this could work out and the Raiders could end up being successful. But I do just think as a fan, it's a bummer that we had to have somebody else do it for us. And it's not just anybody else, but specifically a franchise that we've seen benefit from the referees, benefit from illegally spying on teams multiple times, not once, not twice, but three times and facing basically no punishment for it. Meanwhile, you know, Raiders have tons of players and especially a former coach who's currently banned from the NFL, even though they didn't do anything as crazy as that. Who knows what's next? Maybe Robert Kraft will buy the rest of the team from Mark Davis when the time comes. But Mark Davis is trying to get positive, is trying to hype up the fan base and show that he's still a real Raider till he dies. And I think he is still sort of sour about the allegations that he did kick out fans towards the end of the season who are criticizing Josh McDaniels. Now we've had at least one fan on this show who claimed that a security guard told him that he was asked to leave for his anti-Josh McDaniels sign and he was told that it came from the highest of the highs. Mark Davis has since denied these allegations and now we have him talking about Thursday night football and how he's upset with the NFL because the NFL wants to flex Thursday night football games meaning they could change it right before the week starts. So say the Raiders were scheduled for you know Raiders versus Chargers Thursday night football. Well if the NFL thinks that the record of the two teams aren't that great they can go ahead and switch that out for another game that seems more exciting. But Mark Davis is upset about this because it could mess up the scheduling of fans who already bought tickets for Thursday night football and he made an example with the Chargers. If you have a Raiders Chargers game in Vegas scheduled for a Thursday and all the fans driving from LA, the Raiders fans and all the three Chargers fans buy their tickets and book their hotels, how the hell do you schedule it now and say, oh, sorry, it's on Sunday. But he slipped that in there, the three Chargers fans. And I do think the Chargers fan base is hilarious, even when they are successful, even when they have a quarterback who the league and the NFL is just all over and acts like is the greatest of all time, even though he failed in the playoffs last year and missed the playoffs the year before, they still cannot grow in their fan base at all. And it is so sad that I've even had Chargers fans come onto my channel and comment on my channel and comment on my live streams just because they have nowhere else to go. But I brought up the kicking out because Davis did deny those allegations. Who knows if that security guard was telling that fan we had on the show the truth. And I think Mark Davis is trying to relate with the fans more and trying to let them know that he is still with them. Now, Brady's love life has been very complicated. Giselle Bündchen, the former Victoria's Secret model, is no longer with him. Instead, uh, Tom Brady, uh, the new partial Raiders owner, well, he might be with another person who might find themselves in the black hole at an upcoming game, and that is none other than Kim Kardashian, the former ex-wife of Kanye West. It's funny, when Kanye West was on a recent talk show where he was wearing a ski mask, I don't even want to say the name of the talk show because YouTube's probably going to get me in trouble. Great, go go marry Tom Brady, whatever you want to do, but get married and use your platform. But he went on a rant about Kim Kardashian and even said something to the effect like, I don't care what you do. I don't care if you marry Tom Brady, just be a good role model for the kids, yada, yada, yada. But it was funny that he just threw in the name Tom Brady. And now what we have going on is Tom Brady and Kim Kardashian supposedly are very, very friendly with one another. They claim Kim Kardashian is just trying to buy real estate in an area that Brady is familiar with. And then Brady's spokesperson has recently denied allegations that they're romantic with one another. But I think if you got these rumors circulating, you got Kanye West slipping out a comment. I think we're going to see a very interesting double date. We're going to see Mark Davis with the Cirque du Soleil dancer that he had at a game next to Tom Brady and Kim Kardashian hanging out at Allegiant Stadium. Let's just hope it doesn't have fans of the other team and actually has a lot of Raiders fans in addition to these celebrities. And here's the thing. There may be a lot of fans from other teams and that's what's so weird about the Raiders right now. You can make a lot of money even if the team is not successful because it's the most expensive tickets in the entire NFL. Vegas is a tourist destination and we saw last year a freaking disgrace. Fans of other teams, especially the Chiefs and Niners, oh my goodness, to cap off the year, it was flooded in red for two weeks in a row. And now the ESPN power rankings have finally come out. The Chiefs are number one, favored to win the Super Bowl again. And the Niners are number five. The Bay Area rivals continue to sit on top. The Chargers 
Chargers are number seven AFC West rivals, even though they choked in the playoffs last year and we knocked out their hopes of making it the year prior. And even the Denver Broncos with Russell Wilson, the most uncomfortable and embarrassing quarterback in the NFL. Well, with Sean Payton, they're ranked 13, top 15 according to ESPN Analytics. And the Raiders right now sit at number 20, above the Commanders and still above the Saints and Derek Carr. But I think a lot of Raiders fans would be reluctant to even place them that high in power rankings. But maybe Tom Brady could steer the Raiders in the right direction. Maybe giving the keys to the franchise to Josh McDaniels and Dave Ziegler will eventually pay off, if not this year, but next. And maybe the betting odds are not in the Raiders' favor right now for a good reason. Maybe the negative Devontae Adams news needs to echo all around the NFL to make the Raiders be the complete underdog that ends up shocking the world this year and making a lot of people rich who put bets saying, hey, I think they're going to pull it off. Both of these things are a possibility, or we could just get our hopes up for no reason. Either way, it's going to be spectacular to watch how it all plays out. My name is Wi-Fi Willie. Peace out, and I hope you have a good one.